Uh, welcome to my tutorial on how to make pizza dough. Uh, I've had a practice run this afternoon and um, yeah, it uh, looks all set to go. So what you need is a large mixing bowl. If uh, yeah, I just whacked myself in the chin, be careful if you get a large mixing bowl, it, it hits you in the face when you pick it up. Um, yeah, you need a large mixing bowl, you need some um, flour. Now, this is locked down, so unfortunately times are hard and trying to get hold of uh, bread flour or strong flour is difficult. So we've gone with uh, plain flour on this occasion, uh, but it should be fine. It's just not as, as sort of bready, but it's good. Um, and uh, we've got sugar. Now, sugar's just, it's only a little bit you need, but it helps go bind everything up. And if I'm very careful with the yeast, I just need some dried yeast, which you can get from my supermarkets. Uh, probably can't see that in the thing. But, um, salt, which is a long way over at the far end. Excuse my little T-Rex hands. I probably could have uh, got things a bit nearer. So, anyway, um, and um, you need a little bit of black pepper. Not essential, but just add something to the flavour and water. Um, so we've got two, we've got one, and, uh, and just uh, the smaller one, which you can't see, uh, is just to top up in a minute. So you'll see what I mean. The last thing you'll need, really, you need a wooden spoon, if you don't hit yourself in the face with it, and um, uh, a little spoon just to stir the yeast, and some scales. Okay, so let's get started. So you get the mixing bowl and put it onto the scales. And uh, hopefully if you move the, the bowl far away enough, you can still see the screen of the, the scales. And then you press the second from the right button on our particular one um, to turn it on. Um, now I've got a spoon that's just fallen onto my lap, so I'm just going to get that for you. That's it. Um, now, unusually our scales have come out of an error, so we're just going to turn that on again. Okay, so you then need to get your flour. Hopefully you don't throw all your cutlery everywhere, but it's uh Yeah, if you if you consider wooden spoons cutlery, don't throw that one as well. And careful with the flour in your chin. And so I like to play this little game. When you're pouring the um First of all, I need to change the uh, scales to not be in ounces, so I need to press the second from the left button. Second from the left button. Uh, I think I need to press it again, I'm not sure. Okay, so once you've got it set to grams, I like to play this little game that you shout stop when you put the, the flour in there. So when you get to 250 grams, I'm just shout stop, it's fun. Try it out. You need to probably do it with the, the flour off of the bowl so it doesn't weigh it down. And then stop! And then that's it. And uh, just for a little bit of extra measure, just throw some on the table. <coughs> now I'm just going to lean over and uh, get the salt that I've just thrown on the floor. I'm going to lean the other way and get the spoon that I've dropped. And we're all set. So, give it a bit of a wipe just to make sure. Now, you can turn your scales off with the right hand button and then just push that away, the right hand button, 
and then uh, push that away and take the bowl off the top. Excellent. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just put a little bit of um, black pepper into the flour over here, just a, just a little bit, and just, just dab it. Okay, and uh, we're going to stop there because otherwise that's all it's going to taste of. I think I might have just used up all of the black pepper in that one. So um, if you like it peppery, then do it and then just, just lob it on the floor because uh, that's fine. Okay, so in there you've got flour and uh, pepper. So we're just going to push that away for now. And grab the bigger bowl with water. Okay, so grab your yeast, dried yeast. What you want to be doing is pouring that into the bowl, but make sure the water is room temperature. Uh, you don't want it cold, you don't want it hot. And uh, just do that. Splash your face and you'll feel whether it's warm or not. And this is where you need to be careful with the yeast because uh, otherwise it's just wasting it. So you're just going to tip that into the bowl. Like that, perfectly. And um, don't throw the little pot away. And I'm just going to give that a whisk. Doesn't matter if it goes on the top, it's okay. Now, <clears throat> on this particular occasion, I've done an absolutely awful job of making this. So, we're now going to grab the salt, just a little bit of salt on my right hand side. Give it a little shake, just to make it feel a bit better, a bit like shaking back. Now I've put so much pepper in my flour that I feel like I'm going to sneeze in a minute, so excuse me if I do. Um, anyway, a little bit of salt in there, that's fine. Oh, a lot of salt, that's fine too. Uh, if you'd like your uh, your dough salty, then that's, that's what we're going for here. So enjoy this. Last bit is that we're going to put a spoon of sugar in. Now, probably not going to use the wooden spoon. Um, we're going to use the little spoon. So we're going to try that now. Now, what you need to do is, if the mechanism that holds your salt out in there, you just, just put it on the side, that's okay. And that's probably enough sugar, yep, yeah, that's fine. So one, one spoon of sugar, and we're just going to close that top up the best we can, because it's broken, and push that far away before that makes a diabolical mess. Okay, so we're going to really stir that properly now. Okay, so once that's stirred, then the I'm not going to lick the spoon because it's uh, gross. Um, but now you've got your yeast water, which is better than my practice actually. So this is looking pretty good apart from the uh, the four tons of pepper I accidentally put into my flour. We're now going to grab the yeast water with one hand and the wooden spoon with the other. And move the mixing bowl a little bit nearer. Let's see it. Okay, so if you like our thing, you've got a little spout then that's what you're going to be using to pour in. Now you just want to stir the uh, 10 tonnes of pepper that you put in the flour and try not to sneeze while you're doing it. Look, I'm going to sneeze. Okay. And why not throw it around? Because if you're going to sneeze, you might as well just force that up. Um, now we're going to gradually pour... I'll do it before I tell you what I'm doing. Um, 
gradually pour the yeast water into the flour and then just stir um, using that sprout. So yeah, th uh, okay, and if you're feeling really lazy, just do it in a massive lump. Um, doesn't matter if flour goes all over your face and your chest because um, there's plenty in there, it's okay. And um, gradually mix it in. I mean, if you're like me, you'll probably be able to um, manage with, uh, with just stirring, but you can use a, um, a mix it, mixer to do this as well. Um, on this particular occasion I probably would have used a mixer instead but it's, it's, uh, it's okay. So we're gonna, now we're gonna get our hands dirty. So you need to take off all of the uh, dough that's on the spoon and then just throw the spoon away. Now just this is where you'll need the extra water that we, that we got. So. I really feel like I'm going to sneeze, so I apologise. Going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. So, take it from me. Put a little bit less pepper in your flour in the future. I'm just going to have a quick drink. I've just got, got flour in it, but. So I just need to wipe my chin because I think I'll be all done. Okay. So yeah, just need need dough. When it starts to feel a bit dry, so I think that's feeling a bit dry now. So yeah, we're gonna add a bit of extra water in. You know, careful not to uh, grab your drink and put it in there. Although that might make it taste quite nice, but just need a tiny, tiny splash. Of extra water, maybe two, and then uh, keep kneading. I mean, you can do this without even looking. It's uh, it's quite therapeutic. Then just add a little bit more water, and then uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter if it goes all over your table or whatever. Now. Like in this situation, one feels like it's gone a bit, a bit sticky. But there's loads of flour around the side that I haven't even touched yet. So I'm going to use the entire bowl rather than the, the front four inches of it just to um, finish up. Now I'm sure you won't make as much of a mess as than I have. Because this is absolutely horrendous. Probably because I've been sneezing and itching the entire time. But I can't even show you with this what it should look like. But it should look like this, just dry. Once you've made your dough, then you need to let it prove. Now we're, what we're going to do is leave that to prove. Ideally you need to leave that for about an hour. Uh, it's okay after after about 30 minutes, but you want to leave it a minimum for an hour, maximum of about 12 hours. And once you've done that, um, you should be okay to to use it. And what we're going to do is we'll uh, we're going to let this prove, and then we're going to show you how to uh, top your pizza. Um, see you in a minute. Okay, so your dough has proved. Hopefully it's proved to be good. <laughs> anyway, we are now going to top your pizza. Now, because we're doing this on a essentially a kitchen table, we're going to do this on greaseproof paper, which we have. Here. So we're going to put it on there. Now, first thing you do... Sometimes you can uh, you can you can put a bit of olive oil on the on the dough, but 
on this occasion, because it, it's, we've used plain flour, you don't need to use olive oil. So we're just going to grab a handful of dough. Now I've already uh, prepared a single amount of it. Throw it down onto the table. Now really, if you've left it to proof for an hour, you want to knead it a little bit. Now, that's, I don't mean knead it as in you need to eat your pizza. I mean beat it. So just keep, keep doing that. And it should sort of dry out, which is good. Okay, so then you put that in the centre of, in this particular occasion, your greaseproof paper. Otherwise, just use your normal work surface. Grab your rolling pin without hitting the tomato. And if you do, just flick it over to the middle of the room. And then start to roll. But bear in mind that it's essentially a weapon. So just be careful if other people are nearby because it will hurt if it hits you. And you start to roll. And don't worry if you do it rather pathetically at first because it will hopefully get better. And you, you, just, you just basically keep going until it's flat. If it, if it does dry out, if it does get a bit sticky, you can use some corn flour, which uh, I don't have to hand, but um, that's a, a lack of preparedness. But uh, you can just keep flattening it out with your hands and the rolling pin if, uh, if you haven't got any corn flour to hand. Which, in these times, it's, uh, it's difficult to, to remember all of these things. Or, actually, you could use some normal flour. So, uh, I just nipped off very, very quickly to get that. So, what, if you've, what you've done is already okay, then just, just leave it. But, on this occasion... I will be uh, recreating it again by the looks of it. So uh, I'm just going to roll it a little bit flat for now. Oh, okay, and so that, I think that's it for a minute. Okay, and now grab your grab your corn flour. On this occasion, it's to my right. Um, feel free to put your finger in the tomato and just throw it. Um, if you want to fondle the flour, then fondle the flour. But otherwise, just turn it over and tip it onto it and give it a little tap just to just to make sure. And also, if the, if the pepper wasn't enough to make you sneeze earlier. Cornflower will. We are now just going to roll it flat again. Now, you, if after the first time it didn't didn't roll flat properly, you probably need to give it a bit more welly this time. And so, sometimes you need to keep going for about ten minutes. And on this occasion, because it's a, a tutorial, I don't want to hold you up. So. It's going to keep going for 30 more seconds and um, just need to roll it to my right a little bit more so the uh, the, the top corner is um, looking a bit ropey. Um, make it whatever shape you want to. A round does tend to lend itself to the dough because, because you're rolling it from a ball, it automatically goes into it that sort of shape but, but uh, we've experimented and tried making square pizzas so once you've once you've got that this we're just going to show you um i've just accidentally just uh just drooped it but it's okay and um it's gonna just just gonna flatten it out a little bit more okay so you've got a flat pizza We'll show you in a minute, but you roll it until you, you want it flat. 
You might want a deep pan pizza, in which case you don't have to roll it particularly flat. So now you're onto your base. Now some people choose a barbecue base. Uh, some people choose a tomato base. You can create, just use a, 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 a passata as a plain plain base, or you can add a bit of um, some herbs in there or salt in there. But um, on this occasion, we're going to go with a, a passata base. So we're just going to grab the tomato, which is basically um, sieved tomatoes. And just going to do, on because this is a small pizza, um, we're going to flick some tomato on there and just do probably just two spoons of uh, some on the dough. If you get some on the, off, of the, off of the dough, it's fine. It's okay, like edge to edge pizza. And probably a little bit more passata as well. Just And we're gonna throw the whole lot on just to make sure because it's uh, it will just get everywhere and just it doesn't matter, it's, uh, it's okay. Just, just wipe your hands on your top. Probably better to wear an apron at some point, but um, it's okay. So we've got most of the passata off of the dough now, but just wipe it off your hands and then pick your cheese. Now, my preference is mozzarella. It's uh, obviously an Italian traditional pe uh, pizza we're going for. So we're going to put some mozzarella on there. At the moment, we've got two two tiny bits on there but we're going to put the rest on now just and scatter it just pebble dash the uh the pizza if, if you miss it doesn't matter it just goes right to the edge goes right to the edge so and once you've got that um any other toppings that you want on this occasion we're going with pepperoni um you can choose peppers you can choose mushrooms um, but pick up the pepperoni stroke it it feels nice it's uh, it's a it's a nice texture so just, just give, give it a little bit of a stroke when you pick it up flap it so get your pepperoni flap it around feel it get used to its texture the more you get used to its texture the more you'll feel at one with your food. Smash that down into the dough. Smash it down into the dough. Make sure you hit the dough and put it on. Now, it doesn't matter if it doesn't cover 90% of your pizza. If if they're all, if it's all over the place, it doesn't matter. There's no, no rules with pizza. Um, so afterwards, just make sure you've got everything that you want on the pizza to be cooked. Uh, I can't show you just at the moment, but we'll we'll show you in a minute. And um, once that's in, what you need to do is put your oven on the highest temperature you can. Um, I personally don't suggest the time uh, with how long to put it in for the oven, because it, it can vary on the thickness of the bread and things like that. So. We're going to go with, uh, if you just put it in high and just keep an eye on it, keep shaking it. And um, once you've finished, uh, once it's cooked to your liking, just just shake it, make sure it's loose from the pan. And then uh, we're going to show you the outcome in just a minute. Okay. So, you've cooked your pizza. didn't turn out half as bad as I thought it was going to be. So um, stroke it and see how you feel with it. Uh, it feels nice. Pizza feels nice. It's a nice feel. Right. Now, if you're lucky enough to already have one of these, get your pizza cutter. It's basically a circular blade that you could cut yourself on. So... What we'll do, it also rings as well. If you listen, give it a little ring. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tuck into this and uh, let you know what the outcome is like. Now it doesn't matter if you 
don't don't cut any particular part of the pizza as long as you don't cut your finger that's the main thing but i'm gonna i'm gonna eat this little bit here and uh cheers it's peppery but it's uh it's nice pizza and uh hopefully uh, you'll find the same thing now we won't mash up the entire pizza because um Okay, I'm going to just take a massive bite of this. Well, it's really good. Well, hopefully you uh, you enjoyed making it as much as you enjoy eating it. Um, but it's turned out okay, and uh, I'm going to go off and uh, enjoy this bit of pizza. I'm going to shred it up a little bit first, and then there. Uh, I'm going to but uh, thank you very much for in for watching my tutorial. Please uh, let me know how you got on. Please wear an apron. It's a very good idea. And um, yeah, and um, we'll uh, we'll see you at the next video. Thanks so much. Bye.